but 9-11 throws the plans into turmoil. The 1,200 foreign engineers fear their lives could be in danger. They make contingency plans to leave the country. In the meantime, they're advised not to go into Western hotels and bars. Business slumps. Beaches are empty. Restaurants deserted. No one wants to be here. For three months, Dubai grinds to a halt. The sun is setting on the Middle East's tourist industry. But the job must carry on, whatever the political climate. The oil reserves are running out. The crown prince stands firm. The developers are now committed to the build. Millions of dollars have been spent hiring the world's top reclamation. They've worked on huge projects, like Hong Kong's Cheplak Kok Airport, Holland's North Sea Wall, and Singapore's industrial center. But no one has reclaimed a structure this size or shape before. By November 2001, the race to build this megastructure is really underway. Nine barges, 15 tugboats, four dredgers, 30 heavy land-based machines, and 10 floating cranes are needed to construct the massive sea wall. For the breakwater team, their first step in this awesome challenge is to build up the sea floor. Three massive dredgers take up a thin layer of sand from the barren seabed nearby. Then they dump the sand in a layer up to 7.4 meters thick. This must be done while the sea is at its calmest. To keep it in place, barge loads of rubble are dropped on top of this. This bed of rock will raise the breakwater from four meters below sea level to three meters above. It's the beginning of the sea defense without which the island cannot exist. The sloping layers take out the force of the waves as they hit the wall. But the sand and rubble layer is only the base, the core of the breakwater. What really creates the protection is the outer armor. For this, engineers need vast lumps of rock. Each piece of rock weighs up to six tons. It's these massive boulders that will protect the fragile island from the destructive force of the sea. But sourcing enough rock is an enormous task. Excavation teams spring into action in 16 quarries across the United Arab Emirates. The 11 and a half kilometer breakwater needs a lot of rock. 5.5 million cubic meters of the stuff. Enough to build two Egyptian pyramids. Rock is blasted out of the mountains night and day. Loaded onto dozens of lorries, it begins the arduous journey to the coast. Here, the rocks are immediately piled onto barges and shipped straight to the construction site. It takes less than 24 hours for each rock to travel from quarry to breakwater. 24-7, this floating conveyor belt delivers up to 40,000 tons of rock per day, nearly the same weight as two aircraft carriers. The density, size, strength, and permeability of each boulder is crucial. This stone wall must last for centuries. There's no concrete or steel holding these rocks in place. These vast boulders are not just dumped in position, graded by size and weight, it's the sheer volume that keeps them here. Positioned by cranes, each rock must interlock with the next to withstand the full force of the sea. Constant checks are needed to ensure the breakwater is in the right place and the rocks are stable. The only sure way to do this is to send in divers, to pinpoint and check every meter of it. Nothing about this megastructure is left to chance. Any movement could cause the rock to crack and the wall to disintegrate, leaving the whole project vulnerable. A detailed study of the breakwater rocks below the water is noted. Divers are looking for signs of fatigue on these six-ton boulders. Their fear is that some will have splintered or been knocked out of place by strong waves when they were put here. Every 27 meters, 
a diver surfaces to record the location of the rocks they're checking. The reading is taken from a man based on land. But so far, this section of the breakwater stands firm. January 2002. Six months after work began, a large section of breakwater stands proud four and a half kilometers out at sea. For everyone involved, it's an exciting time as the dream becomes reality. When the first breakwater came up, of course, we all went out there. We had to stand on it. Uh, this tiny little precipice of rock in the middle of the ocean uh, and look back in Dubai and say that this is the beginnings of our job. It's a momentous achievement for the team, but there's still over 10 kilometers of this vast sea wall to build. The engineers are jubilant, but their happiness is short-lived. Winter is closing in. With a schedule of only two years to complete the breakwater, the last thing anyone needs is a delay. Winter in the Middle East brings shamals, great storms with winds of up to 56 kilometers per hour. Wind shifts are sudden, whipping up the sea, bringing torrential rain, violent thunderstorms, or blinding dust storms. On land, little can move. Out at sea, things are even worse. Massive waves batter the boats that need dead calm water to place the sand and rock with pinpoint accuracy. We had to seek shelter in the very little shelter that we had built. Engineers plan for the bad weather, but the storms of March 2002 are worse than they feared. Everybody crowding around trying to protect themselves from the storm. The boats find shelter, but more worryingly, will the breakwater hold? It's a nail-biting time. Over the next three weeks, the storms are relentless. All the engineers can do is watch and wait. The breakwater stands firm, but the schedule is slipping. The construction team is three weeks behind and the pressure is immense. Every second counts. It's vital that the fragile sand island has protection. Only when a 550 meter long section of breakwater is built can the Palm Island begin to rise above the sea. But the schedule is desperately tight. The entire megastructure must be complete by 2006. They have two and a half years to create the island and breakwater, and just two years to build the city on it. The only way to meet the deadline is for both the breakwater and the island to be built at the same time. It's not an ideal situation. It will mean that throughout the build, the Palm Island will have the bare minection from the sea. But the engineers have no choice. The deadline is set. While the second team building the island wait for the protective breakwater to be built, they keep ahead of schedule by laying the sand foundations below sea level. But now, eight months after construction began, they are desperate to break the surface. Finally, April 2002, the first 550 meter section of the breakwater rises three meters above the sea. At last, the builders of the palm can step up the action and bring the island above sea level for the first time. To complete this massive island, Team 2 has the awesome task of finding 94 million cubic meters of sand to create their island, enough to cover the whole of Manhattan one meter deep. It's an enormous job in itself, but finding the right sand is an added headache. Dubai has more sand than it could ever need, but there's a problem. Desert sand is the wrong material for the job. It's too fine. The particles won't cling together. It means that the vast sand island would simply wash away. The engineers must look elsewhere. The best sand for the job